do we use it to eliminate this coordinates here? Every point will become the instantaneous rate of change of curvature at that particular place. If we look at this in cross-section, so it would be something like this, you know, folded shape, you can tell that curvature is not changing at all here, but then it starts changing more rapidly here. It, it, it picks up and accelerates over here and slows down again. In other words, curvature changes at different rates throughout the, the thing. So every point for Gauss could not be considered locally without a global reference point. And space, instead of becoming a set of X, Y, and Z addresses, became a field of rapidities and slownesses. The rapidity or slowness with which curvature is changing at that particular point. Riemann was his disciple, was supposed to extend this concept from 2D to 3D, like every good disciple does, but Riemann was cocky. Riemann went for the whole enchilada. He just deciphered how this could be applied to spaces of any number of dimensions. And he called those spaces, which are identified without any Cartesian coordinates, multiplicities or manifolds. Now, Deleuze takes these ideas because Bergson had already taken ideas from Riemann, Husserl had already taken ideas from Riemann, so he already had, there was a, a series of philosophers that had found this distinction very important, but Deleuze is the one that uses this new idea of space, and I'm going to explain you how in another class, to conceive, to say, well, this is actual space, but this is virtual space. This is the space of virtuality, the space that does not have any global set of coordinates. But physicists did too. Einstein became famous when he realized, you know, in, in the times of Newton, outer space, you know, the space of the universe, was thought to have, to, you know, if we can pinpoint where this star is, we can pinpoint where this other solar system is, is relative to an XYZ set of coordinates, and therefore there's got to be some absolute space, some some enormous set of coordinates relative to which we are measuring where everything is in the universe. Einstein's revolution in the theory of relativity was to get rid of this Cartesian coordinates by using Riemannian geometry, which is called differential geometry, a geometry of differences, the differences in the speed with which curvature is changing, by using that to get rid of absolute space, and that's why his theory is called the theory of relativity. There is no absolute space, and you can study space exclusively with the values at every local portion of space by using this type of geometry. He, I just, just to close the class, Einstein became famous when he, when he theorized you know, this planet Earth, that's Mexico again, that's uh, Florida, right? that's planet Earth, that's the Sun, say, and these are two stars that are on the other side of the Sun, that are farther away from us of the Sun. Now when, and of course it is the Earth that's rotating about the Sun, but let's assume right for the sake of clarity, because I'm running out of space here, that it is the Sun that's rotating doesn't really matter for our purposes here. Einstein said, well, the light from these two stars will reach Earth, but it will be affected by the gravitational field of the Sun. The Sun will bend space around a little bit, and so they will curve a little and then reach Earth after curving. And so if we take a photograph of the stars at night, they will be separated by a certain amount of space, but then if we take those same photographs during the day, they should be separated by a wider amount of space, because the space is curved around the sun. He was able to determine that because he was using local information without this ridiculous set of coordinates. Of 
course, you cannot take a picture of a star during the day. So his theory went untested for about 10 years. Then in 1919, there was a full eclipse of the sun. And everybody thought, there's going to be a full eclipse. The Royal Society of London, the, the Royal Academy of Paris, sent people to the place of, in the Earth where you could see the eclipse better to photograph those two stars to check whether Einstein theory was right. When they came back and measured the amount of distance between the two stars, the prediction that Einstein had made that they, should, that they were supposed to be one centimeter apart exactly came out true. And at that point, Einstein became a superstar. But he only became a superstar because Riemann and Gauss had already produced this way of thinking about space. So philosophically, what matters is not this, is this. The fact that we got rid of absolute space and now space could be thought in a different way. That's what topological thinking is. Its philosophical consequences will become clear on Wednesday when I expand on the Lucian thinking about topology. Meanwhile, the class is over for, for now. We'll return at 4 o'clock to discuss questions of subjectivity.